Well, uh, thank you for sitting down with me. My I, pleasure. Uh, I've been wanting to interview you for a long time. Yeah. I think you know that, and it's been difficult setting it up. So I do appreciate you taking the time to <laughs> spend some time with me, of and in course. your motherland as well. Do you enjoy being in France? Uh, do I enjoy being in France, or is uh, it just too hectic? Uh, I don't know. I haven't put so much thought in it. <laughs> um, at the moment, maybe um, I, you know, it, it depends. I think each trip is is very different. You know what I mean? Do you have a Do you still have a, a social connection to France, though, to Paris? As in, can you come and relax here, or is it just purely work now when you come here? No, it's purely work. Okay. Pretty much. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I have a couple of close friends, but yeah. it's mostly a place for me to come and work, which okay. is fine. I mean, you know, okay. it's fine. Like, you know, that's it's not life's a, moved on. Yeah, yeah. And that's the beauty of life is a constant change. So yeah. if you expect the same from life, uh, you're probably going to be quite disappointed. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. And, and that's a beauty. I love changes. So um, okay. I, uh, I embrace the good and the bad and what the future brings. So yeah, now trip to France are mostly work. Yeah. yeah. So speaking of changes, I think it's fair to say since 2014 you've you've changed the eyewear game i think yeah yeah <laughs> how does Probably. that make you, how does that make you feel uh i obviously i not very focused on that part okay i'm, I'm mostly focused on the next 10 years okay but not you, are, you must past. be aware that uh, of the uh, impact you've had uh, i'm aware because there's so many companies that copy me yeah and uh i would say in a heartless disgraceful manner <laughs> can i can i say your name of course you can uh you know uh i will not because uh, but i i think uh, especially the last year it's been a bit hard to see it's a bit of pill to swallow because um if you are inspired by our work or um if it motivates you to do a better job um for yourself that's one thing but i think there's many companies now that absolutely don't care and it's just uh imitation yeah so yes it's a uh, of course you're you, you know it's a form of flattery yeah, yeah. fine i get it but but deep so down it, uh, I'm, I'm, it I'm i can see yeah. that it makes me quite aware of i don't know if we've changed things but it makes me quite aware of our place yeah in the industry but uh that's not my focus because yeah. my, i i got to where i am by not focusing on what other people do yeah so at the moment, I'm entirely focusing on continue to reinvent GMM. Yeah. And we're going to do that. We have like a lot of projects in the next two years. And uh, my idea is to, to be in a very different place. Okay. So well, I'm, I'm hoping I'm to not, ask you a couple of things yeah, later. I'm not, I'm not yeah. so interested about okay. what we've done. It's, it's fairly uninteresting to me. I'm, I'm very interested in what we're going to do. What we're going to do. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's really yeah. interesting to hear, actually. Because actually, a question I was going to ask you later, but it seems like the right time to ask now is obviously in you you reference <coughs> cultural figures and icons mm -hmm. of the past but yet the brand is very fresh and modern yeah how how do you tread that fine line and not end up just a nostalgia trip down memory lane of of what people uh, because did for me it, it's not about nostalgia it's about curiosity it's about a common human history i think for me our common human history or our our, our stories as human beings, the pursuit of, of beauty, the pursuit of the perfect pair of eyewear, that's what I'm interested in. So yeah. I'm taking stories that have a, a strong uh, point of reference that are actually meaningful to our human species yeah. in general. So it's not and just... I'm moving the context, I'm just uh, reactualizing those frames and put them in a modern perspective for a new generation. Okay. And it's always been my work and this will never change. Yeah. I, I don't think I, that I want to change. I'm, I'm a storyteller and uh, I just, uh, I'm helping. I hope I'm helping people being curious. I hope um, I'm encouraging people to to discover things they don't know about. I, I hope um, I'm, uh, I'm transporting people in a different time period uh, to embrace a different character, a different side of their personality. It's all about curiosity and it's all about beauty. Yeah, That's my work. That's what I do. Well, I think I can tell you from my experience in the store, sunglasses have always had a an ability to make somebody feel like a rock star or whatever it may be yeah. but for sure with JMM now with just eyeglasses spectacles mm. it's happening too they're putting them on and, and you can see a character change happening 
while yeah. they're in, like uh, while somebody is trying them on almost. A lot of people telling me they they, they say, oh Jerome, we don't really buy the glasses, we buy the mystique behind it. So I I think we're my job is always to create collectible object. And the yeah. collectible object is essentially a vehicle for storytelling. It's, okay. um, and that's, that's interesting. what I do. Okay. And, uh, the physical manifestation today of my work is eyewear. Is eyewear. Yeah. Tomorrow it, it can be, something, be else. Yeah. something else. Yeah. It's not that interesting to me. What's interesting is, and I always say that, and I think that's a big difference with our competitors, I, I don't design for 2025. I'm working on next Selmo collection, but uh, that's not my interest. I'm designing for the second, third generation that is going to discover those glasses. Yeah. I'm always thinking, if your grandkid, my grandkid, anybody else's grandkid, somebody in 70 years or 80 years pick up a pair of GMM and yeah. the quality is built to last forever. Yeah. You know, when they discover the frame, I want them to discover an entire world, a world of craftsmanship, handmade yeah, for sure. object, a world of quality of design and integrity in the love of beauty. And the story is the inspiration and the time it represents. Uh, and that's what will make a collectible object. That's what will make it Okay. in 20, 30 years, you're going to pass on your yeah. collection of GMM. Because <laughs> yeah. it's just like a fine watch or a fine yeah, wine. Yeah. It keeps getting better. Okay. And I design for those people, second, third generation. So in the back of my mind, I'm always, okay, in 50 years, when people discover that pair, that frame, it's got to have everything built into the frame. And it's not just a pair of eyewear. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a conversation. It's storytelling. It's our common heritage, you know? Okay. And I mean, that's what we do as human. You know, the difference is we have a high sensi sensibility to beauty. And uh, it's up to me to express it at the highest level, the most creative, spiritual level in a pair of eyewear. So um, I, I, I guess, you know, that's why we're not about nostalgia. I'm, I'm not, I mean, not nostalgic. I'm always about I know, I tomorrow. Know yeah, yeah. But I'm, a, I'm an historian too. And yeah. I understand very clearly that if you don't know where you're coming from, you don't know where you're going to go. And okay. to go where we go, we got to appreciate uh, uh, things that happen before us and those stories is what make us human you know and, that is the uh, beauty, yeah. and the beauty is to <laughs> share it and yeah. the beauty is the appropriation you got to appropriate you you got you each gmm story each person that buys the glasses they appropriate it in their own way, their own way. and uh, that's what's beautiful but the idea of beauty is the idea of curiosity the idea of an heirloom object, a collectible object that has a story that is intrinsically built already in the design is very important too. It's interesting you say that because I my first memory of Jack Mary Marge actually goes back to when, and you'll probably remember it fondly, where you, uh, Silmo, maybe 2015 mm. or something, you on a desk on your own mm. with some frames that I think were leather wrapped, maybe bison leather wrapped yeah, or something yeah, like that. Yeah. And, and I remember seeing them and I, it piqued my interest, but it was clearly being designed by somebody with a future in mind, yeah. like creating something that I felt was a collectible, something that you, you would actually want to give out to a generation. Yeah. yeah. How, like, where does that, I mean, you're a collector yourself, right? I'm a huge collector. BMXs, I think? Uh, everything. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Native American, First Empire, uh, BMX, motorcycles, uh, uh, historical books, uh, jewelry, uh, watches, eyewear. I have more than 2,000 pairs. I, I someone, I, I, I love object with stories. Okay. I think that's what makes it special. Yeah. And I love sharing those stories and I love the idea of curiosity, the, the sense of discovery yeah. it brings to your life. Did that feel an easy decision to design with that in mind? 
10 years ago when you uh, but it, it, it's not easy it's who I am you know okay. I'm, I have just, no pretense okay. to be okay. somebody else yeah. I have no interest in being somebody else you know yeah. not like some of my competitors <laughs> no interest uh, I have no interest for Jacques Marimage to be not Jacques Marimage okay. it doesn't interest me yeah so I cannot be I'm, I'm completely authentic I'm, I'm a person who does everything with all my heart in 100% passion I'm, I'm 100% involved in what I do from the atelier to the to the to the to the campaign so uh, to taking photography and uh, I, I don't know how to do anything else uh, at a lower level so yeah. I know. think that's there's no doubt that the people that are wearing it and have multiple pairs and collect mm. it or just have one pair and enjoy yeah. it use the word craftsmanship for sure it exudes craftsmanship mm. and quality and um and it seems totally uncompromised and that's exactly what you're saying it's uncompromised and it also because at the level of manufacturing i believe i'm the guy who spends the most time in japan in the atelier i mean i always hear it from people yeah they say the craftsmen they see you jerome yeah you're hanging out in the factory yeah I don't think that <laughs> becomes meaningful. Yeah. They understand why they're doing it, who they're doing it, and it gives them a sense of purpose. Yeah. And uh, this is all about this is a purpose-driven project, you know, from my, our, our philanthropy with a wolf project with Native Americans to the idea of protecting craftsmanship to the idea of uh, collectability. It's it's all purpose driven, yeah. right? And we're trying to give a, a sense to lives that has no meaning. I mean, it's a, it's a you know it's a philosophical conceptual project. And again, I'm I'm on eyewear, but because it's it a beautiful be, yeah. vehicle yeah, yeah. for all this, because it's uh, a transformative object. It's uh, it's uh, it's a mask. It's a you know uh, something to protect you. Something to uh, you know uh, emphasize you. Whatever you decide, you know. And it's a sensual object in your nose, on your face. It's the first thing people see when they see you. So there's so many attributes to eyewear that makes it special. And that's why you love eyewear. I love eyewear. We're passionate. But uh, yeah, it's it's that's what it's all about. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah, some of the people who are going to see this that maybe don't know Jack Marimage or are starting yeah. to get to a new, what is it like in the atelier? Is it? Are you, can you give them a sense of how much work work? It's it? uh, it's uh, incredibly difficult to make a pair of Jack Marimage. I, I think it's uh, one of the most difficult process in the world, probably. There's a hundred fifty. At least 150 steps that are done by hand. Yeah. And uh, imagine every time out of those, there's 300 steps to make a, a pair of eyewear, but you know, 50 to 60% is still completely done by hand. So imagine how many things can be wrong. Imagine the attention to detail. Imagine the labor of love, the yeah. polishing, because we have thick acetate, huge surfaces. Is, it's yeah. so hard to get those surfaces to be flat, yeah. polished, beautiful, to, to reflect the, 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 the light of the sun, you know, I mean, the, the power of life, what powers earth. So yeah. there's so many beautiful things that are built in, but it is incredibly difficult. Our ateliers, they always say, Jerome, there's a Toyota line for everyone else, and there's a <laughs> Lexus high-end luxury line for Jacques Marimage. Yeah. We, we definitely are not produced and handled the same ways than everybody else yeah and uh, I'm um, you know I'm very grateful because I think um, it's it's a, it's a very tight partnership with Japan I, I love Japan I'm passionate I'm obsessed I mean Japan is something that you know once uh, it's something that calls you once you like Japan it becomes yeah. an obsession so it is one of my many obsession and uh, um, the way we've been able to work with all our Japanese uh, craftsmen is, is incredible. And uh, um, I, I know I, I kill myself at work to do the design, to come with new solutions, to, to innovate um, in terms of what we do in the eyewear sphere. And I know they do the same for me. Because yeah. I know they see it, and I and I know I spend time so there, and I communicate that. They have a sense of pride in their work Correct. as well. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, I didn't, I wasn't... It wasn't until I went to Japan that I realized just how obsessive Japanese craftspeople yeah, are. Yeah, because you have to, to understand, um, compared to uh, things that are manufactured in Italy, that it's, Italy is mostly newer machines, right? From the last 10 years, yeah. it's a lot of uh, process that have been, uh, become a little bit more automatic. 
in Japan, a lot of time works with post world to 50s, 60s, 70s machines, yeah. so very old. And in order to be really good with older machine or older process, it's um, the only way to be really good is longing for perfection. Okay. And at that point, craft becomes almost uh, a spiritual journey. And that's what Japan does. Yeah, definitely. They, I think there's... they elevate craftsmanship into spirituality. And where Italy is more, their genius is uh, art and industrialization yep. together. So a frame built in Italy has a very different DNA than a frame in Japan. Because uh, in Japan, uh, Somehow, um, I think our frame have a, a real sense of humanity and, and warmth and luxuries and only Japan can give you. So, yeah. um, but it's, it's that quest to rise above, push what you do yeah. to such a high degree that you're above it. It's at, at that point, it's, uh, you elevate it to uh, something that is sacred. And, and that's what you get out of Japanese craftsmanship. Have Especially in the DIY industry. Have you designed the perfect frame yet? Uh, no, no, absolutely <laughs> the not. The quest and, for and, perfection, and you said. That's why I mean, I mean, my my project is really the the quest for the for beauty and and the best frame, the yeah, absolute yeah. frame. And, and and I'm not done. I'm, I want to <laughs> I want to continue. I always say I'm I like to work at that edge, you know. And when I find the edge, then I ask everybody, uh, including our atelier in Japan, to to keep going beyond it Go so beyond, yeah. there's there's always things to improve there's always things to be done better there's always a better shape and and also i think the best frame for 2022 might not be the best frame for 2025 okay. so i understand i'm uh, it's uh, i'm on an endless sort of pursuit and um but it's okay it's it's uh it's a beauty of life my, my life in general is a journey toward God and uh, my work is, is uh, in general um, a, a pursuit to that unreachable uh, beauty or perfection yeah. <laughs> and they both are going to end up in some sort of uh, uh, you know I don't know nirvana ecstasy yeah. or uh, energy somewhere else but it, it's I think, um, I think it's fair to say there's thousands of people that think you're pretty close yeah but you know the the the, the you know, uh, it's the pursuit of meaning in, in a yeah. meaningless life sometimes, yeah, and okay. it's important to have it. And for me, it's a it's a big driver of of my work, and um, so I'm gonna continue to 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 try to to get as close as I can because I'll never make the perfect frame. I'm not delusional. <laughs> uh, I, I I know exactly where I stand. I know exactly who I am. Uh, I know my flaws, and I know my my uh, you know uh, a, a, a couple of my maybe. Um, strength uh, but I understand it's 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 not possible to do that but I like at least the idea of trying yeah well both of us clearly agree that this is pretty that's right damn good, it is so. pretty damn damn perfect <laughs> but it's not there yet it's so okay. well, it's still room to improve um, given everything you've said so the heart and soul of the atelier and yourself mm. and everything that you've used all these beautiful mm. words what do you expect from us as retailers of your beautiful product to give to the customer? How do I think the, you know, again, the, the most beautiful thing you can offer is, is your product knowledge, right? And uh, it's passed on the story, shares those, the stories that we have in common, our love and passion for eyewear. I think, first of all, that's something that unites us yeah. very strongly because I know how passionate you are for eyewear. So, and uh, so I think the first job would be to, to teach them you know about what's great quality great design in eyewear to 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 help them sometimes if they don't have a have a point of view or, or find their way in the great world of yeah. of eyewear uh, production and it's really to share uh, our stories and 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 share the Jacques Marie image dna at the highest level so it's it's really what partner in yeah. telling the story and that's what we do at the end it's not about the, the sale it's not about the, the product it's really about the story okay. so I think the, well, the story is is what 
makes Jacques Marimage special to, yeah. to everyone. Well, I think certainly people hearing this are going to feel that, and I, I guess it, it does a bit of the job, which we've been trying to do for years, is hearing yes. it from yourself, so thank you again. A um, couple more things. So you mentioned earlier about the future, mm -hmm. and, like, clearly jewellery is... Yeah. I mean, you're, you obviously yeah. have a talent to design, and yeah. you've talked about that. So yeah. where is... Can you give us an idea of where Jack Mary Marge is going? Uh, well, I know I mean, so that may be a hard question to answer without yeah, divulging too it, much. But it's uh, hard um, because I think the first of all, the future is always in motion, and that's uh, that's a beauty about it. So I, you know, sometimes you can. I have an idea of maybe the future within the next. 12, 18 months, and maybe I have an idea of where I want to go in 10 years. Yeah. Sometimes in between, it's, it can be very fuzzy, yeah. and you got to show resilience, perseverance, and a lot of agility uh, to manage it because things are constantly in motion. We, yeah. we talked a little bit about that. But yeah, we, we are working on uh, a capsule collection of jewelry. It's, it's a big passion of mine too, I think. Our eyewear is already very informed by jewelry. It's got jewelry kind of details built in it. So that's something we're gonna to continue to do and we're gonna to continue to to explore more avenue with eyewear, you know, newer uh, materials, um, uh, different way to to manufacture frames yeah. and, 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 and just continue to, to push and advance and and create uh, unique impressions in the world so people can can express themselves you know um, I think you know one of the great beauty of life is freedom and I think the cost of freedom is higher and higher these days yeah for sure um, so I think sometimes through our frames and I don't want to sound like I'm getting out of myself but People can experience a little bit of that freedom. They can travel. They can be in yeah, a different I, period, in a different country. Yeah. Uh, they can become somebody else. So, yeah, I mean, eyewear is a premier vehicle of that expression. But I think also uh, I really want to express that that space in jewelry. And we, we're going to do that in the, next, uh, in the next two years. And so just do you think of yourself as an eyewear brand now? Or are you transcended into a I, fashion um, brand or is it just uh we're not fashion i okay. don't i don't do fashion okay. uh you know fashion is uh one season you're uh tropical tokyo and the next season you're uh, uh berlin bar house I, that's not <laughs> what i do i don't do fashion um i don't try to do i don't like to pretend yeah. we're fashion and i'm not interested to make jacques marie Maj a fashion brand at all i think if you ask me, we, we, we make heirloom type of objects. Yeah, I think that's you know, doubt. That are very personal to people. That are luxury objects that you like to pass on. Yeah. And that are intimate objects that you wear uh, on your skin, that are like uh, collectible objects that have a similar scale. So if you ask me what, what Jack Murray image maybe it could be, maybe it could be what you put on your face, what you put on your hands, yeah. what you put in your pocket, yeah. you know. But this is a private, very personal space of those objects that have a very strong meaning, that are meaningful to you because you use them every day and there's a patina and uh, yeah. there's a sense of uh, belonging and uh, they, they tell stories about you and where have you been that you might yeah. want to pass on because they have that absurd quality yeah. and human story built into them. So that's more my space. Okay. Uh, collectible heirloom object, um, you know, with a sense of purpose and luxury. Yeah. But we're definitely not a fashion brand. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> we don't, I, I don't, thought that was a bad word. I no, no, I'm not <laughs> trying to be a Gucci or Saint Laurent. No, no, not at all. That's cool. And um, I mean, I can't give too much away because it's obviously from the new collection, but the, the new color that you've launched, which has that beautiful yeah. heirloom quality to it already. Yeah. The Burlwood. Yeah, yeah, so I yeah. think the, the guys yeah. should go crazy over that, I think. I yeah. hope so. I, like I said, it's a... It's a Colors I was used in the late 70s, early yeah, 80s. Sure, I right. mean, you, you, you saw me. I, I, I'm always in like some sort of late 70s, early 80s. Yeah. Uh, it uh, screams uh, that. Saint Laurent yeah. suit. It's really my era. So uh, I, I love that time period. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited. For that color, that acetate color, it took us a long time to develop it. And I'm very, 
Um, I yeah. very much look forward to for me, people to experience it. Yeah, it took me. It takes me. I see the color as soon as I saw it. It reminded me of say an old whiskey cabinet or something exactly. like that. Exactly. This beautiful wood. Yeah, finish, it's so. it's that world of heirloom object, uh, yeah, and that's so. really what it is. With you know, intimacy, yeah. luxury, built yeah. in. Uh, yeah, it'd be interesting to see yeah. how people. Yeah, uh, feel about it. When I they think see it. they'll like it. I There's so. no doubt. It's well, it's so special, right? Yeah. You it's like a, it. I like yeah. it. That it's such matter. a special, <laughs> such a special color. Okay, and then just to finish off, obviously, I believe you have a, a bit of a connection to the UK. Mm-hmm. Are the um, do you think the um, the JMM fans of seen will ever have the chance to see you in our store? Maybe. Yeah, of course. You know, I, can, I should I should come we can uh, make more happen. to the UK. <laughs> Obviously, I have a, a, a beautiful and amazing girlfriend who's Welsh. Welsh, yeah. And a kid who's half, half Welsh. So, <laughs> um, we're, we're watching the Rugby World Cup right now. But yeah, I I, um, I will spend more time in the UK for it sure. Be, so, um, it would be my pleasure to visit you guys. We should make guys. it happen, yeah? Yes, yes, we should, no doubt. Okay, and on that note, we'll say cheers. Cheers. And uh, merci. Merci. Thank you. Okay. Mm-hmm.